If I told you that anybody could create amazing 3D reliefs with just a couple of words or a couple of clicks, it probably sounds too good to be true, but that is what's about to launch very soon. Now, some of you have noticed that Kafka have been pretty quiet this year in terms of releasing big updates, and it is because of this. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this amazing new feature, plus lots of tips and tricks before it goes live. Now ahead of its release on the 1st of September, they have given myself and a few others early access in order to test it. But actually, I saw a demonstration of it back in February whilst in Atlanta. The Kafko team demoed it to a couple of us, and even back then it was looking amazing, but they have brought it on so much over the last couple of months, and it is honestly going to be an amazing release for the Kafko and CNC community. Now this is all underpinned by AI. You use a few words or commands to generate an image that you're after. You then take that image and convert it into the 3D relief. The AI generates the images for you from your command and it also generates the 3D relief from that image you created. So from a user's perspective, the amount of effort and input you need is absolutely minimal. Now in order to test it, I was given 2,400 credits to basically spend however I wanted generating images and reliefs. Now I'll come back to credits very shortly, but this is what I learned from all the testing I've done so far. Now the way this works is you type a few words in to describe what you are after, maybe a 3D relief of a polar bear. And from there, Kafka will generate you four options to choose from. You pick the image that you think is going to work best or that meets what you need, and then you tell it to generate the model from that. It will look at the image, it will examine the colors and the depth on it, and then it will then turn that into a 3D model that you can open within Kafka or save directly to your clipart relief library. Now, if you have never used one of these AI text functions before, do not worry, it is easier than talking to a human. You don't even have to be polite. You just give it a couple of words describing exactly what it is you're after, maybe an elephant's face, and then perhaps a couple of words describing how you want the image to be output. So something like grayscale or 3D relief, or maybe even a flat cartoon drawing. And ultimately, from the description you give it, that is how it will generate the options that you can select an image from. Now the joys of this is it will give you four images to choose from straight away, but even if you don't get the exact image you're after, you can maybe readjust the wording that you've used and generate some more. Now it does take some practice to start to understand the types of terms and the outputs that you're going to get from it, but Kafka will be providing a guide that lists some of the key useful phrases. But the important part here is, well, if you're starting to dive into the world of AI, use AI to help you. You can jump on something like ChatGBT or Google Gemini and actually tell it what type of commands are going to be useful in this type of function. And it will give you a list of words and explain the outputs you may get a result of using that. So for example, using something like a 3D relief command is going to generate an image that would in theory look like a 3D relief, giving you that detail, that shading. Whereas suggesting something like a flat watercolor illustration is going to give you obviously a softer, minimal depth type of illustration to work from. And genuinely, the best way to learn on these types of platforms is just start testing. Put in different commands, see the results you get, change some words around, and you will start to see how the AI engine interacts with the certain words and terms that you are using to create the type of images that you are after. But for the most part, the simplest way to think of this is in three different sections. Explain what it is that you are after, for example, a polar bear in a 3D relief style on a flat gray background. And most of the time that is going to generate you a brilliant image that you can then convert into a 3D model. Now the first biggest tip I can give you is that the AI does not do the thinking for you. It just works off the commands you are giving it. Now for the most part, the simpler commands are going to generate you nice clean results such as a bear. But let's say for example, you wanted a more scenic type of picture. Explain that in a bit more detail. You're after a bear set against a backdrop of pine trees with a large mountain range on the back. Even down to the detail maybe of the rocks that it is standing on. Make the rocks textured and jagged. Those type of commands will allow the AI to pick up on that and generate the image that you are after. 
Now I'll mention at this point as well, I'm gonna be following this video with another one in a couple of weeks about five ways that you can make money from this new feature within Carvco. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you are and keep an eye out for that video. Now a lot of people are going to love this purely on the way it can generate 3D reliefs of certain objects and ultimately that is one of its core strengths. But actually it can do some amazing things elsewhere. For example, generating textures. You can use this to generate textures of wood, bricks, pebble, rope, lots of different things that you can think of and ultimately they can add more depth or more interest to a piece that you are creating. Now once you've generated an image that you are happy with, you can move on to converting that into a relief. Now it does take a few seconds to generate the relief, but once you are on the next screen, it gives you a couple of options of how you can manipulate this relief straight away in very simple terms. There is a depth scale where you can start to magnify or reduce the amount of depth in the 3D relief itself. There is a detail slider, which will allow you to make the detail more positive or even more negative into the actual relief itself. And finally, there is the zero plane adjustment. Now, sometimes on your reliefs, you may have areas that you do not want or things that are a bit textured in the background. You can start to raise the zero plane up through the depth of the relief to get rid of the sum of the detail that you do not want. So these three basic tools will help you to edit the relief and manipulate it before you even open it up in the core software. And a lot of the time, this will be good enough to generate what it is that you are after. Now, as well as opening it up in the software to edit, you can also save it directly to your relief library. Now, this is a brilliant feature because maybe you want to generate multiple things. So you can just keep saving them to your relief library, then create a model shortly after in order to pull them back in individually. Now we just mentioned about saving things to your clip art library. Now one of the current limitations of the software is it can only generate things in a square format. So ultimately, if you're trying to generate something in a different shape, what you may have to do and what you may find very useful is to save it directly into your clip art library because it is very fast and easy then generate a new model in the proportion or scale that you're after and import your relief from there in order to start building your core model up. As this is a Carvco related video, it seems an ideal time to tell you about another Carvco update. Earlier in the year, I spoke about wanting to do training courses and it turns out my good friend Hamilton Dilbeck also wanted to do the same. We have partnered up to create Carvco Academy, the official training partner for Carvco CNC software. Now we are still finalizing a couple of things in the background, but we are getting ready to launch very soon. If you want to stay updated, head over to carvcoacademy.com and sign up to get the latest updates. Now most of my testing has been done in the text to relief function because for me, that's the most exciting part. But the other half of it is also very powerful, the image to relief. Now you can upload pretty much any type of image into this as long as it's not transparent and you're going to get a relief from it. So imagine taking things like family photos and wedding photos and converting those into reliefs, maybe pieces of art, paintings, illustrations that you've done, and again, converting those. You could take something like a child's drawing that they have done at school, generate that into a 3D relief for a Mother's Day present. It really is going to open up what you can generate very easy to sell and make profit on. Now as one final tip for the image to relief generator, sites such as laserpix.com give you lots of free images that are targeted at lasers. However, these work brilliantly in the relief generator. This Rhino image, for example, designed for coins, when we bring it into Carvco, we'll generate a model from it and it gives us an amazing relief that we can work with. So you can use other resources to make your life easier on top of using these tools. Now, one thing I found is that a lot of the time the reliefs being generated are amazing, but sometimes there may be some areas you need to clean up or correct. For example, around the edges of things, you may often get little artifacts that are just looking a little bit rough. Or one thing I occasionally noticed was that things started to bow in the relief or it wasn't as flat as it should be. Now, obviously in these scenarios, it is quite simple to just open them up within your software and correct various bits. Obviously, if you have some artifacts around the outside, you can effectively clip that area out and just zero relief it down to flatten it all out. Or maybe if the relief 
relief is at an angle, you can use something like the fade relief tool to correct that and start to level it back up. So there are a couple of things to keep an eye on, but equally, even in Maker with some of the most basic 3D editing tools, you can still correct a lot of those. And again, they are very simple to do just by clipping things off or using things like the fade relief tool to level stuff up. Now another really cool feature is that you can save all of the images that you are generating before you even make them into reliefs. Now most of the time you're only going to use one image to take forward to a relief, but at the end of the day if you're generating four you may as well save all four. They could come in use later on. For example, you may use one image, perhaps it doesn't quite turn out how you want it in the 3D relief, so you can then just go back, use the image to relief converter, grab the image you generated previously and bring that through instead. So if you're generating all of those images, take the time to save them as well because as I say they will come in use sooner or later. Now this is obviously a credit based system so let's talk about how that works. Now to generate your four initial images that will cost you one credit. To convert one of those into a relief that will cost you four credits. So basically text to relief is going to be five credits in total image to relief is four credits because you're already supplying your own image. Now from that point onwards, take everything I'm about to say with a pinch of salt because it's not yet being confirmed, but Carveco will do so before this fully goes live. Now this is being rolled out to everyone on subscription regardless of whether you're on Maker, Maker Plus or Carveco Pro. Now you're going to get a bonus pack of credits to get you started and to dive in with this and do some brilliant testing. Then beyond that as part of your subscription package you will get a monthly allowance. This will obviously be in relation to the software you have. So Maker will get a smaller allowance, Carveco Pro will get a larger allowance. And should you use your monthly allowance you can always top up your account by by buying credit packs. These start as little as around $10 and will go up to two or $300, but at that end, we are talking several thousand credits. So in reality, pennies per credit as opposed to pounds. Now the elephant in the room is you will have noticed I've mentioned subscription multiple times. To my knowledge, this is not being rolled out for those on perpetual license because it can't be integrated. So if you are on a perpetual license and wanting access to this feature, you will need to transfer over to a monthly or annual subscription in order to gain access to this. Now, as I say, Carveco will confirm all this in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for those announcements. But that is how the credit system works. And ultimately, for the little amount they're going to cost, you're going to be able to generate some amazing work and also ultimately make a lot of money from these reliefs. Now anyone who has used AI based products before know they all have strengths and weaknesses. One of the biggest strengths of this is generating individual things like this and it really does a brilliant job of it. But I did have some questionable results when doing more landscape broader style images. For example, I tried to generate a safari style scene. It ended up putting animals heads up into the clouds and animals had weird things like two tails. So obviously it is not quite perfect. Now the first thing I'll point out this is continually improving. It's come a long way since when I first saw it back in February. It will improve again before it goes live in September and it will continue to progress well beyond that. So do bear with it, it will continually get better. But if you don't get the results you're after, remember there are other tools to do it. Take the same command, maybe put it into something like Google Gemini, see what image you get from there. And you can always import that back into Carveco and use the image to relief tool, ultimately saving you some credits as well. Carveco probably don't want us advertising that, but it's going to help you and ultimately helps you use this product. Let me talk about safety for a second. This is both a very serious subject and also slightly comical at the same time. Now obviously users of all ages use Carveco software and they have done what they can to take precautions to limit the use of certain words and displaying certain types of imagery. So that is good because obviously it's protecting a lot of people out there. Now I have no doubt some of you are going to put some very questionable commands into this to see what it will generate or upload some very questionable images 
these into it again to see what the 3D reliefs come out like. Now, one thing I will just say to you is take into account that Kafka can potentially see everything going in and coming out of those AI engines. I'm not saying they actively monitor it, but ultimately that is the way AI works, is that it builds on what is going in and what it is outputting. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you are putting those type of commands in. So I just want to say thank you to Kafka for giving me early access to this and allowing me to test it. Hopefully this video has given you a good indication of what to expect, just how powerful this is going to be, and some tips and tricks to help you work through it when you get access to it. Obviously, if you don't have Kafka and you are interested in it, there are some links down in the description area for free trials and ultimately to sign up, so definitely go and check those out. If you've got any questions, again, let me know in the comments section. I will do my best to answer. Thank you all very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons and I'll see you all on the next episode.